Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Jenna, in case you guys didn't know. <coughs> and I am sick, I'm sorry. <coughs> I've had a cough, cold, sore throat thing going on for the past like week. I was hoping I was getting at the end of it the other day and then like the nasal congestion started, so. And now my daughter is sick too, so if baby could just hold off until we are all healthy again and the house is completely sanitized, that would be awesome. So 38 weeks, I did my 38 week appointment on Monday and I'm just gonna go over really quick what happened at that appointment, what was discussed uh, and what my stats were. So um, it went a lot better than my 37 week appointment, I will say that and I might actually make a video about what my 37 week appointment was like because you guys, it was so embarrassing. Like I'm just gonna, it was just terrible. So I needed a better taste in my mouth before I have this baby with this clinic. <laughs> um, but this week's appointment was a whole lot better. Um, and I'm just gonna go over it real quick. So I am at 121 for weight, which um, is actually several pounds lighter than I was with my daughter. I think I gained 24 pounds the entire pregnancy with her and I've gained 17 this pregnancy. But I started out a few pounds heavier than I was um, with her because I was really, really focusing on muscle development before I got pregnant. And um, so I started out this pregnancy with a lot more muscle on me. And um, I think a lot of that has been metabolized to grow a baby, but we'll see where I'm at postpartum. That's gonna be an interesting journey. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, my blood pressure was 104 over 60, which typically my blood pressure is pretty low. It's been a lot lower than that a lot of the time. Um, it's been higher than that too. So it just, it really varies, but it's never gotten over 124, I don't think. So I've stayed in the low to average end of the spectrum for blood pressure, so I don't really worry about that. I don't. I'm not really worried about preeclampsia or anything like that, and I feel really, really lucky that I don't really have to think about that. Um, baby's heart rate was in the 130s, which it typically is. That's kind of just where he hangs out. Um, it's pretty consistent at home, too. I have a Doppler that I use. When I feel like he's not moving around much, I'll break that thing out to ease my mind, and usually he's in the 130s, 140s. So it doesn't surprise me that he was that at the appointment, but it does surprise me that they caught him like not, that they were able to actually get a good reading on it because the couple of weeks before that, it was really hard to get an accurate reading because he moves around quite a bit. Especially when he feels that gel hit my belly. I think he knows, he knows what's coming. So uh, we basically reviewed my birth plan a little bit and that's honestly a whole separate video in itself because that would require me to tell a bit about my birth story with my daughter, which is a whole other video in itself. So if you guys wanna see that, like drop a comment below and I'll try and get those filmed over the next few weeks before life gets really crazy. So basically we reviewed my birth plan, um, my, my wishes for how the delivery is handled and everything. We have to plan around my being GBS positive and having fairly fast labors. So with my daughter, I labored for eight hours and I pushed for three minutes. I don't know how fast labor could go this time. Potentially, I could cut my time in half or even less because I had a miscarriage in between and that actually does count as a labor. So I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what this labor is gonna look like and that makes me really nervous and really excited at the same time. But the whole complication, the whole cog in the works is being group B strep positive. I was not with my daughter and then this time I have had it from the first trimester on. They didn't even do a GBS swab at 36 weeks because they're like, yes, you are absolutely GBS positive because we found it in your urine. But I've been doing everything I can to reduce it at least. So obviously I need to get antibiotics during labor. That's kind of the standard, that's kind of the standard way of treating that to keep baby out of danger. And the problem with that is you need two doses of antibiotics over a course of, I think it's six hours. 
and we don't know if I'll even have six hours once I'm once I know I'm in labor we probably won't even have six hours so it's very unlikely that I'm gonna get both doses of antibiotics at best I'll probably get one and so what we reviewed with the midwife was that I need to have my bags packed for an extra night and just plan on staying that extra night and I need to get into the hospital as soon as I feel like I might be in labor so they're kind of watching me like a hawk they remind me at every appointment if you feel anything get in here but I didn't really even know I was in early labor with my daughter so it's gonna be really really hard and I'm just praying that I get some sort of intuition that I am in labor and I go in and I know but otherwise we're just gonna have to wing it that's all that's all I can say about that so this week's symptoms Oh, wait, I didn't, did I tell you guys? Okay, so one more thing from my appointment. I am measuring 37 weeks, not 38, but they are not worried because he just seems like he's a peanut. Lots of things can affect that one centimeter of fundal height um, at your appointments. It could be you had a big meal and you're measuring 39 weeks instead of 38. You know, it, anything can throw it off. So it's not the best thing to judge the actual growth of a baby by, I don't think, but I digress. Uh, he's been measuring about a week behind, or my belly has been measuring about a week behind since 33 weeks, I think. But it's steadily, like, he's still growing. He's not falling any further than that behind, so they're not concerned. And, yeah. My symptoms this week, obviously, I've had a cold. I don't really think that that has anything to do with going into labor soon. I don't think that has anything to do with being pregnant, aside from the fact that your immune system is a little bit lower when you're pregnant. So that has not been fun to deal with because being sick while in your third trimester is not fun at all because you're already uncomfortable enough. Like stuffy sinuses when you already feel like you can't breathe, not my favorite thing. Uh, lots and lots of lightning crotch. That's kind of an ongoing thing. I There's lots of lower pelvic pain and twinges and things like that. I, I feel like there's a lot more than I remember there being in my first pregnancy. I could have just forgotten over the last four years. It has been a while. So I'm having lots and lots of what we call lightning crotch, which basically feels like someone's taking a toothpick and stabbing your cervix. And sometimes it's a short, quick stab, and it'll happen when I stand up too quickly. So when I stand up from making this video, I'm probably gonna feel it. But that is just one of the things about pregnancy that happens. And that's been happening to me since the second trimester, like, Somewhere in the 20-ish weeks, it's been happening since then. And I'm only dilated to one centimeter, so um, that's not very much. And so I don't really feel like any of this pain is going towards actually helping me dilate. It's just there. Uh, he is head down. He's facing my spine most of the time. He moves around a bit. He's been there since 21 or 23 weeks or something like that. He's been head down for a really long time. Levels in my sleep, they it's been a roller coaster, always is, third trimester. Sometimes you sleep amazingly, sometimes you have night after night of insomnia. Um, it just depends. It really helps that we got a new bed, uh, a new mattress, and I'm in a lot less pain on that mattress than I was on our old queen bed, which, oh my gosh, that thing needed to go so bad. I didn't even realize how much I was dreading going to sleep at night, or the, the battle to get to sleep at night. And so we got this bed and now I'm like in love with it and I can't wait to go to bed every night. <laughs> so this week got a little bit interesting because I feel like there was just this shift. Monday I felt like I'm gonna be pregnant forever. This is just gonna be the rest of my life. But Tuesday there was a shift and I can't really explain it. Um, I'm gonna sound like such a hippie, but I just felt like something changed. And I actually had an anxiety attack which I do not typically get those. And even if I do get anxious, I'm not quick to call it an anxiety attack. This was like, I was panicking. My heart was racing. I was, I was in a cold sweat. I had to call my husband and have him come home because I didn't feel like I could be alone. I didn't feel safe. Um, and it all kind of flashed back to my miscarriage experience, which that is another video on here that you can watch. If you want to know about that, I'm not going to get into details, but it does haunt me to this day. And apparently it's <clears throat> much more rooted in my subconscious than I thought it was. 
because it really flared up. And so I'm gonna be discussing that and those anxieties with my midwife at my next appointment, just to make sure we're watching out for my mental health going into this labor as much as we are my physical health. So that was not fun. The next day was not really that fun either. I had, and this is so TMI, I'm sorry guys, there's just no nice way to say this. But I had diarrhea like all day on Wednesday and I don't know, I didn't eat anything different. I didn't do anything different. I just had diarrhea all day and I had like cramping and backache and intestinal cramps. I couldn't tell what was contractions and what was like diarrhea cramps. It was a pretty long day. I still, I was feeling better by the evening and I went and worked out and that ended up being really good for just helping to get things circulating again after kind of being on the couch all day. I heard that that can be a sign that labor is coming soon. It can be a week, it can be a few days, it could be a few hours. Um, I faintly recall having a day like that when I was pregnant with my daughter, Avonlea, um, towards, towards the end, towards labor, but it didn't really, it didn't really strike me as much of a symptom and I'm not losing like any more mucus plug or anything like that. So I'm kind of just, tucking it away in my hat. I'll bring it up at the next appointment as well. But it almost made my mom like buy a ticket and jump on a plane because she's coming all the way from North Carolina to help me out around the house and taking care of me because Sam's gonna have to go back to work um, fairly soon after the baby's born. And you know, he's still gonna have to work up until I go into labor too. So. Um, it's just gonna be nice to have somebody here, have some company. Um, I just told her to hold out and wait until the original date that we planned because today I don't feel like labor is coming. I feel fine today. So uh, yeah, backache, cramping, everything about these symptoms is so come and go. Um, I feel like I've hardly had a single contraction today. Whereas I felt like yesterday I had a lot of Braxton Hicks no matter how hydrated I was. So I'll have like a great day and then I'll have a bad day or not necessarily a bad day, just a really symptom filled day. And then I'll have a day where I'm like, this baby's never gonna come. So I think that that's just your typical end of pregnancy mental game. I don't really have the luxury of knowing when he's gonna arrive and I so wish that I did, but at the same time, it's kind of fun just knowing that it's gonna be a surprise. So anyway, on to the belly shots. If I could get up, ow, yikes, my legs hurt. Okay, so this is the belly. And I feel like it just, it doesn't look much different week to week. Just big, really, really big. I still have like muscle up here too from working out, but uh, yeah. I've traded my six pack for a keg for the most part. Anyway, and these maternity pants are the best. That's the belly. It's huge, I'm large as a barge right now and I'm okay with it. <laughs> that is my 38 week update. And uh, if you guys want me to do any more videos or you have suggestions, like drop them in the comments below because I would love to hear your ideas. I've thought about doing a what's in my hospital bag video. I've thought about doing a birth plan video. If you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know. I'd love to make that for you over the next few weeks. I'm just kind of spending a lot of time waiting, so um, I can certainly drop some new videos for you guys. And thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, I am on Instagram. I am not, well, I do have a Twitter account, but I'm not really on it, like, ever, ever. Um, it's just something that never quite clicked for me. If it does, I'll let you know and I will drop that link for you guys to follow me there. Um, but Instagram, I'm pretty active on and I would love to do, uh, I'd love to get some Q&A questions from you guys. I would love to get some video ideas and um, add me on Instagram, we'll chat. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this update.